Canadian and uh, author and columnist Mark Stein joins us right now. We're talking about how he's celebrating Thanksgiving yeah. on yeah. Thursday. Well, number yeah. one, you're filling in for Tucker tonight. We know that for sure. That's, uh, that's At right. At 8 o'clock. Yeah, that's right. 8 o'clock, uh, filling in for Tucker. And uh, I'm going to insist on a cornucopia <laughs> no, right. I, as good as that. I dig that cornucopia. The that goat is horn. A, yeah. <laughs> what's, what's that? That's why they call it a cornucopia, because it. Uh, this is... The yeah, yeah, I know, right I know, I know. I'm an old guy. It's cornu horn copii of plenty. Look I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to do the whole of Tucker right. tonight in Latin. <laughs> right, the, uh, fantastic. Ratings blockbuster. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> I know we, they used to do Catholic masses in Latin. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, my my poor old mum. She never felt quite the same about once they started. When they changed it. Change it. Really? Yeah. Does anyone know Latin? Did your mom know Latin? The yeah, we, we, we She raised me in Latin. And the it's English. I have a problem. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> To talk to you about some news of the day. You've got this judge in California, the Northern District of California, liberal judge, given lots of money to the Democrats, including President mm -hmm. Obama. He has blocked the president, President Trump's executive order, mm -hmm. to, that was going to prevent sanctuary cities from getting federal, some federal funding. Yeah, and I, I'm, I think this is ridiculous, and I don't really understand why Americans put up with it. The idea that every rinky-dink little district court judge is a legislator. And I get sued uh, more than I would like, so I find myself appearing before judges more than I would what like. What do you get sued for? Oh, well, you know, this and that, climate change and all kinds of, uh, and all kinds of things. And I don't generally... Uh, have a high regard for the quality of judges. And the idea that every judge is a one-man legislature is absolutely repugnant to the principles of self-government. And it's nothing to do with constitutional principles. Uh, we now have judges who basically strike down uh, highly specific uh, pieces of legislation just because they're politically opposed. By, by the way, this is to make uh, illegal people not have a place to go because right. you're stuck in here illegal. Yeah. This is no big leap to stretch the law. This is a black and white issue. Yeah, no, and, and by the way, I may say, as someone who uh, is a legal immigrant, and boy, I wouldn't make that mistake again, uh, to this country, if you're a legal immigrant, yeah. you're obliged to have your green card on you at all times. Doesn't matter if you're flying to New York for a big time uh, morning TV show, or if you're strolling in your backyard, uh, you can be uh, pulled over, and, uh, it, and it's for your children. Your children, in theory, in law, are meant to have their green cards with you when they go to kindergarten or first grade. Right. And so this, this difference between one group of people who get to, to, to treat the laws with impunity and the others who are micro-regulated is not tenable sure. in a free society. Well, I tell you what, it does not sound as if the people who uh, killed one Border Patrol agent mm. over the weekend and seriously injured another were in this country legally because right. uh, what we've heard so far is that is Officer uh, Martinez. He was killed. He was a father. Or is a brother. Uh, apparently, he died of blunt force trauma. Apparently, they were tracking some right. trail, some trail with footprints, and uh, somebody apparently ambushed them, and they feel that they just took a great big rock and, and broke the guy's head. And, and this is actually, I mean, this is a terrible tragedy, but it is also why we need the wall. We're often told, you know, you can do it with sensors. These guys, the sensors Drones. picked up something and they went to investigate. Uh, they couldn't secure the crime scene. These guys got away. Uh, the fellows who did this. We may never catch them. And, and the reality is that you actually do need to... The, the, if you go south of, say, Tucson, Arizona, there are signs on the highway saying, proceed further at your own peril. In other words, the writ of the United States government, the most powerful government on the planet, does not Can't run on, on its border. own territory. It's unbelievable. You know, well, it don't you feel like the liberals are saying, you hear when, when all these Democrats are running for office, they're saying... This president or Republicans want to separate families? No, it is right. about getting the criminals yeah. out. Kate Steinle's guy was deported five times. Right. The guy who killed her. Right. This other, this other child we interviewed his right. mom was hit by a drunk driver who had been deported fifteen right, times. Right. But it's this again. It's this stupid sentimentalization. Uh, obviously, you know, immigrants are like any body of people. They include all kinds. Uh, they include all kinds of characters. But again, it's the difference between uh, people who get to break the law and, and people who are.
micromanage. On the southern border, you can walk in, you can kill U.S. government officials, you can run drugs, you can terrorize people. On the northern border, if you're a uh, bagpiper in Montreal who wants to play in a bagpipe competition in New Hampshire or Vermont, they will see the U.S. Department of Agriculture will seize your bagpipe at the border. Right. So if we issued a bagpiper to a, a bagpipe to everyone south of the Rio Grande, we would have no problems with drugs, right. terrorism, anything. Because right. bagpipes, yeah, they can get. It's hard to imagine the bagpipes really, uh, really catching on in Central and South America, but well, that's just me. Have you never heard of yeah. bagpipe mariachi Not, yet, not enough. Perfect. Good I one it, for Thanksgiving. I had it on my turntable, but my turntable doesn't work anymore. <laughs> I need a new needle. Now let's talk about the other controversy, right. and that the president has brought LeVar Ball mm. out of the sports world into the general public. Right. This is one of the most bizarre people you're ever going to meet. Right. Did a great job raising his three kids, mm. but he is absolutely bizarro land. The president did not get a thank you from him, and he tweeted out that maybe I should have just left the kids mm. there. So LeVar Ball hopped on television to try to explain why he wasn't thanking the president for getting his son out of China after he shoplifted. Try to make sense of this. How do you know? How do you know it wasn't involved before I even knew that? I mean, he didn't even know they was over there and like that. Okay, what was the reason for him going over there in the first place? Over what there I'm trying before to say him. is, what are you trying to it say? wasn't like he was in the U.S. and said, okay, uh, there's three kids in China. I need to go over there and get them. Okay. That, that wasn't a thought process. All right. Okay. Right. Uh, what we're talking about right now is a lot of stuff about my son just because his last name is Ball. We're not even talking about the other two kids. Well, I don't have no doubts about what he did. I got doubts of what he didn't do. How's that? I would say thank you if he would have put him on his plane and took him home. Then I would have said thank you, Mr. Trump, for taking my boys out of China and bringing them back to the U.S. There's a lot of room on that plane. I would have said thank you kindly for that. The problem was the president wasn't going right home. He had to go to the Philippines and Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why didn't he take, uh, yeah, three shoplifters on a tour of Asia with him? Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, the first thing they tell you when they give you a passport is that when you're in a foreign jurisdiction, you're subject to the laws of that jurisdiction. Yeah. So if you're a Canadian bagpiper and they, sh and they to take you to Gitmo, <laughs> then tough. Uh, and the idea that this, this boorish ingrate uh, three petty criminals, who, who, which in China, that can ruin your life. Mm -hmm. Ten years. Uh, and, and, yeah, and, and the idea that somehow he didn't uh, know he should have had, he should have taken them in on Air Force One, they should have been riding up front I'm with him. I'm not sure he's not playing us. But, no, you know, I, 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 think it, well, I actually think it might have been an act last well, night. It was so bizarre. Well, it might be, it might be Twitter trolling. But, sure. the, but, but the thing is, Brian, and I know this kind of gets close to your turf, it comes at a time when professional sports is not held in high esteem mm -hmm. by the American people. Right. Because uh, to be quaint and old-fashioned about it, these guys who, who are handsomely remunerated no longer seem to represent the sporting virtues. And that guy's a good example right. of it. You know what? His son, though, did apologize to the President of the yeah. United States and thanked, and thanked him, him as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, true. and yeah. I just got. By the way, this guy Wendell Brown, he got in a bar fight in China. Yeah. He's been in jail for 13 months. He can't yeah, even get yeah, a day no, in no, court. No. That easily could have happened to these kids. No, no, they're serious about that. They're, they're serious about that stuff. There, you do something that you can do in a sanctuary city or whatever, and it doesn't matter. You do it elsewhere on the planet. Your this, life's wrecked. Isn't this guy really controversial, though? I mean, he. Yeah. People, the yeah. NC, wasn't the NCAA all over him because they were selling their t their tennis shoes for like seven hundred dollars? Right, right, mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah, Why no. the kid had to shoplift, I don't know. But he no. made a mistake. He apologized. The president yeah, said, that, "I hope you have a great life." And then the dad does this. Yeah, but that's the thing. They are in the end, they are shoplifters. But, they uh, are shoplifters. They made, yeah, they made a mistake. They made they, a mistake. I, my hope is the president doesn't go back at Levar Ball. I want him to go away. Right, right, please, right. please, Mr. President, sure. don't. <laughs> Tweet back. <laughs> I don't want to talk about this tomorrow. The president is going to tweet when the president wants to tweet. Yeah, I'm yeah, getting yeah, that idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get used to it, Brian. Yeah, no, That's no. what he does. You, you're influential, but you're not that influential. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Sorry, Brian. Mm. Right, anything else? Call the barball. You can't shut off his Twitter feed. You can right, do um, everything else. He's watching, Mark but he's, not, he's scoffing at you for that, Brian. The president Brian. might say, I'm it's going like... to listen to Brian Filmer. Uh, yeah, I'm like not that. tweeting about don't, that. Don't raise expectations of superpowers you don't have. You can't. You're not. The telling the president what to do. I'm just yeah, begging him. I don't want to talk about LeVar Ball tomorrow. Uh, Mark Stein, we're going to be watching you with your bagpipe tonight. And my cornucopia. Uh, the go. only show with bagpipes and cornucopia. Yeah, take that, Laura Ingram. <laughs> Try to match that. <laughs>